Good morning. Good morning. Some of you are just arriving and some of you have been fellowshipping for about an hour probably. So good to have you all starting to gather in here this morning. How many of you uh, look at the sermon title and then look at the front cover and try to make a connection? Have you looked at the front cover? Eh, done that this morning. Have you done that this morning? It's really interesting, I think. Tammy finds the picture. Oh, she does a great job. Yeah. Yep. Tammy found that uh, picture. Uh, I guess it's a butterfly. I don't <laughs> Pretty amazing, anyway. And then, hopefully there's an insert in there. You guys have that all filled out as we've started. I think Arlen's going to tell us more about that as we go along this morning. So uh, that piqued your curiosity there a little bit. I want to make sure you checked out the announcements in the bulletin. Just, uh, I'll just highlight those real quickly. Um, of course, Mac and Bernie will be here next week uh, from Meskwaki Friends. And then Andrew shared last week about this uh, mother and, uh, who lost everything in the tornado in Marshalltown and she and her three kids and some opportunities to help there. Uh, Movie again at Honey Creek this Wednesday night. Information there about that. A blood drive coming up yeah, tomorrow, actually. So they won't take my blood anymore since I'm on blood thinner. So they really liked my blood when I could give it. So I don't, anyway. And then there's a letter of thank you from the Whiteheads and their address and all there in Nampa, Idaho now. Uh, notice the change of date from what the a monthly cal church calendar said for the House of Compassion and then the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace Universe, uh, University is coming up. That's very good information. Well worth the time and money spent to, to follow that if you can. KD has a video of that but it's not working real well this morning but it may be on our Facebook page. Is that Facebook? Yeah. Kind of check that out and give you a little bit more information on what to expect on that. Terry Bear has an announcement. Would you want to do that? And then if there's others, be ready. Okay, the Promise Academy at Quakerdale is getting ready to begin a new school year. There are 12 new students ready to start. However, the classroom is not quite ready for them. I'm looking for some volunteers to spend an afternoon uh, helping to finish the classroom. If you could help, please let me know, and we will try to organize a time to work. Thank you. So no set time right now, just whatever works out for the most of the people then, so. When do classes start? Do you? August 23rd. So, short time to get some work done. Are there other announcements to share this morning? I wanted to acknowledge uh, Landon and Haley's wedding yesterday and Paul and Andrew's new daughter-in-law. Off and running here this morning. And see, Lyle and Margaret were the oldest couple on the dance floor last night. <laughs> Told Ann we might make it, and then I saw them out there and I said, forget it. <laughs> Kevin. Okay, as you take a look up at the screen, you'll see two new logos I just put together last night. Uh, hopefully make it easier for you to uh, see us when we're not here in church part of the other 167 hours that we're not here preparing for the next service. It is on the front cover of your bulletin and then our Facebook. So you can like us, subscribe to us, follow us, do all those things. Uh, you'll see more uh, type of uh, ads generated in the future. Um, I'm hoping by beginning of the year we'll be able to begin doing a little bit of live streaming, things like that. Uh, so stay tuned by subscribing. I think I mentioned Lyle and Margaret were the oldest. They were the longest married couple. I don't know if they were the oldest or not, necessarily. Lowell and Eunice could have given you a run for your money, I think, though, on that one. <laughs> so, are there other announcements? If not, if you want to follow along, uh, either on the screen or in the Bible, the uh, call to worship this morning, from Isaiah, and notice the verses are not exactly consecutive, but real close, so I'll try to do my best on that. Isaiah 40, starting with verse 26. 
Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name, because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. And do you know, and, uh, do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary. Uh, who, has, who, who has done this and carried it through, calling forth the generation from the beginning? I, the Lord, did I skip a page there? I think so. Didn't quite match up. Okay, I was 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those, oops, I, okay. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So if you would turn to your hymnals, let's uh, stand and join in singing hymn number 140, Great is the Lord. Continued worship and uh, have our offering this morning. Father, it is good to gather in your house this morning. It's a beautiful day, and we thank you for that, how you've provided for us uh, through the season, and uh, for the, the crops just look beautiful around here, and we thank you not to take that for granted. And it's many other ways that you've provided for us. We pray for those who are less fortunate that you would be seen in their lives as well. Uh, as we uh, prepare for our offering, may we be generous, realizing that everything we have comes from you, and acknowledge that, be faithful, that we might uh, serve you better and further your kingdom here among us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's rise and uh, as we sing our thanks for the offering this morning and then can remain standing for following him. page uh, 583. And while you're standing, I wanted to acknowledge Tom Showalter, our yearly meeting superintendent, being here. I should have done that earlier. Thank you. Glad to have you with us this morning. I remember, uh, wait a second, Jenny. <laughs> we were at Cedar Rapids uh, for our triennial, Quaker men and uh, Quaker women, USFW. Uh, the men were meeting and every once in a while they'd ask Tom to pray and then several different times and after a while he said you're always supposed to be ready to pray preach or bury the dead so we, we had him a little worried when we called him up here this morning he thought he was going to have to preach he would be ready to do that i'm sure anyway so good to have you here okay we'll continue on with our hymn number 583. further instructions. Nobody in there. Oh yes. Here they come. Hi. Thanks for coming up. We're gonna sit right down here. Okay? Great, thank you for coming up. All right, in the title of the message today, it has a word called transparency. And I wondered, well, do you know what transparent means? That's okay. That's why we're gonna do this little portion. Try to look at what transparency is. Uh, right now, none of these are transparent because transparent means you can look, that light's gonna pass through it and you can see behind it clearly. Like windows, 
most time, are transparent because you can see right through them. Now, there are some ladies here that are probably uh, a little more worried about the transparency of their windows than others, but I, I it doesn't make any difference to me. So, let's get my ear back on. It worked pretty well in pre-production, but uh, <laughs> there we go. Okay. Need a smaller ear. So, transparent, you can look through it. Now, there's a message behind each one of these windows, these window lights. But I had this one up here because there's a scripture that talks that a lot of times we look through life with rosy colored glasses. And we think we see, but we really don't because things are a little bit unclear. This one is translucent. All right, you can wow your teacher this year with the translucent. Say, oh, it looks a little translucent to me because light can pass through it, but it's still not clear, is it? Because you can sort of see the message. This one, I don't know if you can see at all, even if I... I can tap it. But this one, maybe you can see something. At least see the paper. And this one is just all covered up. And we go through life, and sometimes we cover ourselves up. We don't show everybody who we are and what we can do and things like that. And that's for a variety of reasons. But what God wants us to do is to be transparent and to show ourselves to everybody clearly so they can see, okay? And not look through rosy glasses and just think, oh, that's okay, but we still don't get the message. Or translucent and you can't see. This one is opaque. I think it's an Irish word from an uh, opaque. Get in. <laughs> so, so you can't see anything through that one. But we want to be clear. We want to be clear to each other. We want to be clear to the community around us who Christ is, who we are representing Him, so that they can, oh, I understand, or I can come closer to you. And we'll talk a little bit about the idea that Sometimes when we come to church, we don't think we do, but we start putting covers over ourselves so that people really can't see the message inside. Because we don't want to say, I'm hurting today. I've had a bad week. I've got some decisions coming up. This is difficult for me. Because most time we want to come in and have everybody think, well look, they look just like they did last week. Everything must be good. It's okay. But people need each other. And they need God living through them to help. So, so you get the message here? No. This one, if I press it up there and get a little... No. But if we take away, then it's clear. And you can see all the way to Milky Way. Sort of. That'll be a, a treat for us afterwards. Oh, okay. So, be as clear as you can. And, and your mom and dad will help with that. And other family members, friends. And go ahead and be yourself. Because God made you in a special, special way. You have gifts that nobody else has. And we need to see them, okay? Before we pray, anything to specially pray with for you? School's coming up. It is coming. Yeah. Okay. Nothing specific? Well, let's just pray together then. Okay. Lord, you guide us and you help us. Help us to not be afraid to walk out into the world and just be who we are. Others might try to bother us and, and say things against us, but help us to know that you're with us we have strong family behind us. We have people who care and support us. And let us be lights for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
So if you wait, Honey, I want to give you one, and then you take and give one to somebody else, okay? Here you go. Here's two. Oh, <laughs> she's going to give it to Elizabeth. <laughs> no, go ahead and take it back, and you can give it to somebody. Same for you. Yeah? Would you do that too, hon? Two? Thank you. Madison, would you do that too? Great. And you've been such a good boy. <laughs> you went to your mother. <laughs> and John? Uh, otherwise, I'll just eat him. All right. See, young at heart, no matter who came up. Huh? Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> Scriptures coming from the Old Testament, Psalms, Psalm 139, familiar to many of you. Got some very familiar passages in it. Page 974 in your pew Bibles. Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit, when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge, too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. God knows us. He knows me. He knows you. But uh, years ago, in a psychology class, I took, I think it was Professor Haig, and we went through the Johari window. Any of you hear of the Johari window before? Okay, some of you. Okay, so we're going to look at it, and I thought, well, we can look at it at the individual level, and then look at it a little bit beyond. This is the basic thing. Kevin did a great job trying to work different things to, to get this up, to, and so I uh, appreciate his efforts. So, it's like a four pane window and the titles on top are known to me unknown to me known to others unknown to others because there's things about me that I know that you know and that's public everybody kind of knows that who I am you know what I do but if we go on the top to the right there are things about me that I don't know and uh, <clears throat> my mother probably could really enhance this portion about the, what I didn't know about me. And this is kind of a blind spot. And this is genuinely some things that I may not know about myself. I just, I just don't. And some of it could be through denial, repression, things like that. Things that I say, mm -mm, I don't want to deal with that. So underneath, I know it, but... Others don't know it. And that's why it's got that cool little thing of hidden. I may not want you to know. I'm afraid that if you know this about me, you may not like me. Most of us really think that's important. To be liked. I'm one of those. 
like to be liked. And so there might be things that, oh, man, if they know that, I'll keep that private. Because if they knew, they might think less of me. And then in the, the bottom corner, things that I don't know, things that others don't know about me. I mean, it's just, we don't know. And so, in psychology class, the thing was, oh, I'm trying. Oh, you know, there's a little button <laughs> to say on. And I'm not making it work. Pointed at that. I'm still not making it work. I did? Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah, we practice this a lot. See, this is the public knowledge that technology and I... Yeah, yeah. So... According to Professor Hake and others, you know, the thing it is for us to become more transparent, to become more public, so that maybe I start to know things more about myself. You know, and so it expands and gets even bigger and bigger so that things that are hidden, I'm no longer hiding things from you. And there are things that aren't unknown to me. And so that bottom right-hand corner, Things that are unknown, it's getting less and less. And really, it turns out, I feel pretty good about myself because I don't have to hide things anymore. I don't have to put on a front. I don't have to put the translucent up or the rosy colored glasses or the opaque so you can't even see. So, that's kind of the goal for a person. You know, I'm not there. I'm not there. I don't know if you were there or not, but I'm not there. But that's the goal. So that we can know each other. Isn't that a good goal? So that when we come in here, we, we know each other. And we love each other because God loved us first. That's the commonality that we have that we can entrust. Now, then I thought, I wonder, and we'll check this out. We'll have varying thoughts on, on whether this is a go or not. I thought, how about our church? How about our church? What we know about our church, what we don't know about our church. What others know about our church, what others don't know about our church. And I'm not sure how exactly the quadrants would work, how percentages would change. I don't know exactly where we are in the public eye today. I just know that there is a portion that the public knows and that we know. We know those things. It was a, a blessing, and I think that still holds true uh, when I was pastor here, that we would have people in town call the office and say, would you pray for that? Because they knew we were a praying church. And so that, for me, is like an example of the public. They knew that. And they would entrust us with things. And we would pray. Missional, some see us as that. Others do not. Whatever. There are things that we know and the public knows. But there's things that they know, and we don't know. We think we know, but we don't know. And again, this is uh, hopefully not telling stories out of school, but it was, you know, I would visit people in town, and some would say, well, I appreciate what you're doing, appreciate the church and everything else, but there are individuals in town that I've done business with, and I would not be able to fellowship with them. And we go, oh, I didn't know that. And what do you do about that? Because it's kind of a person-to-person -person thing, but it's 
knowledge that the public knows and that we probably deny or would rather not deal with. And there's stuff about us that we know that they don't know. Isn't that sad that they don't know that we care? Isn't that sad that they don't know that we love? Isn't that sad that they don't know us? But how are they going to get to know us unless we introduce ourselves? Well, they should come in. If they would come in, then they would see how we are. If you haven't been in that position, you ought to try it sometime. Go, go down to Des Moines and go on the east side and just walk out there and say, hey, here I am. And people go, who are you? What do you do? Prove yourself to me. We are in the position of having the greatest power of love to indwell in us and we go out. But we're reticent to do that. What will they say? What will they do? If we are going to be more public, then we're going to have to be more open. We're going to have to do more. We'll hang on to that just for a little bit. And from here on, you know, this isn't right. This is a perspective. This is an opinion. This is uh, what I've witnessed or, or seen. But sometimes we think we are something and we really aren't. Had the uh, privilege and, and the unique pleasure and the uh, little bit of struggle to have a Kenyan couple live with us uh, for a, a few days after a triennial. And I forget how far back this was, quite a while. Six, seven years ago. It wasn't the last one, the one before that. So, and it was unique. <laughs> At first we thought he had malaria and I thought, oh great, we're having somebody come to our house and they got malaria, that would be great fun. And. Uh, and he didn't, I don't know what was up, but he slowly got out of that and uh, he wanted to, to buy books and so I took him to Half Price Books down in Des Moines. So we had some chance to talk about things and uh, so we were going and talking this and that and uh, one of the things that came up was uh, abortion. And he said, well, I, I see uh, this is what he said. I see that uh, the, uh, the un unborn baby is a parasite that's living off of the woman, and so the woman has every right to get rid of that parasite that's living off of her. I had never heard that. And at first I was struck back a little bit. I thought, ooh, oh yeah, what? And so, um, didn't seem right the opportune time, but there was an opportune time when we got talking again. And uh, I said, you, have you looked at Psalm 139? And I said, just read it sometime. Because when it talks about you knew me in my mother's womb, you created me in that secret place. Just saying, if David was known at that time wasn't he a person at that time and you, you kind of put those things out there and you kind of wait well what's he going to say and he said I will have to read that again and so the differences kind of went back I mean maybe the, the lighter differences of what he saw in our culture as something I didn't look at. And he asked, well, where are all the old cars? I said, I, I mean, kind of right. No, no, I mean old cars. Where are the old cars? I said, oh, I don't know. Usually if they don't run anymore or they're, they're not as good and rusted out, they go to a junkyard or some of them go to a demolition derby. Why did I say that? And he said, what? Uh, oh, the demolition derby. Well, what is that? 
And I said, well, uh, kind of like at fairs or other events, they get cars that are old and, and then they run into each other until they stop running. <laughs> and so I went, got on to uh, the computer and got on and found some demolition derbies and he says, these, these cars are all running. I said, yeah. And, and then you wreck them so they don't run. <laughs> yeah. People could use these cars. Mm, yeah. So, I'm thinking, huh. Then we go into the hardware store, and we're looking at things. And again, it's, we felt this, and I don't know how to explain it because we don't feel it anymore, but when we came back from Ramwala, we went into grocery stores and we were just overwhelmed. Because we went into grocery stores in Palestine and there's the oatmeal. You got one choice of oatmeal. And you may not have that choice next time, so you better get it today. And you have one kind of this and one kind of that. <gasps> Two kinds. But in a regular grocery store, it's like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Well, anyway, he's just looking around and saying, oh, look at that, look, look at that. Look. And then he came to an end cap. I said, what's this? I said, oh, that's bird food. Bird food? <laughs> I said, yeah. We, people feed the birds. These are the birds in your house? <laughs> I said, mm, no. No, these are wild birds. You feel you feed wild birds. <laughs> well, I, I don't personally, but there I mean there are people that feed the wild birds. He looks at me and he says, So you have already fed all the children. You have already fed all the children, so now you have extra for the birds. Do we know that about ourselves? Do we know what choices we are making? Are we aware? And then sometimes people go off and say, well, you know, the gospel's moving through Kenya faster than anywhere else. True. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what's special about that? And then yet, there's a higher percentage of men beating their wives. So where's the gospel in that? Throwing this out for you to think about. Because I'm certainly not one that can tell anybody what to do. But I'm thinking, I need to examine my life and others need to examine their lives because what's the window look like? What, what does the window look like for the church, not just this institution right here, this building, you people, me, involved? What does the body of Christ look like to the world? Because we kind of see ourselves and the world sees us, but the world also sees things that we're either not aware of or we're repressing or we don't want to deal with. What are we going to do? I think we open ourselves up to the broader picture and we become more transparent. I, emotionally, mentally, Spiritually, that might be very difficult for us. But if I can take another realm, and talking to people a few years back, uh, and talking to them about World War II, and different stories from different people, and this is not the only story, okay, because there are other things that went on that were more difficult and whatnot, but the perspective of a few people was this, that, oh, in a way, World War II was a wonderful time. 
Because financially, economically, we were all the same. You didn't have to kind of worry about anybody being above or below you or anything else. We were the same. And it was interesting how we treated each other because everybody had the same number of ration cards. Everybody had the same number of this. Every, we were equal. So, again, I don't know if that can transfer quickly, easily. Never easily. But if that can transfer over into our spiritual lives and say, oh, I may not be there, but I know it's tough. And I've said this before, but C.S. Lewis's line that we're all in the same hospital, just some of us might be a little more well at the time, but we're all in it together. All have sinned. All fall short. And if we can understand that, then perhaps our doors would be open wider, widest, because people coming in, they might come in transparent and say, here I am, these are my problems. And we go, oh, okay, well. Or do we have them come in and we say, you know what? I don't have those, but I've got something similar. I've got someone you could talk to. That's difficult. You know, let's sit down. Come to my house. That should be probably in our vernacular more. Come to my house. Invite people of whatever strife, whatever strife, whatever. Invite them and get to know them. And that will expand. So, uh, really, I put that in the bulletin just so you'd have it close by, so you could see. You can shade it in if you want. Give yourself a little bit of a where am I thing. And a little where we are as a church. And just hold on to it. Check with it in six months. What do you think? Anything different? Am I reaching out better? Am I being more transparent? Am I doing what God would have me to do? So it gets back to, if you're there, praise God. But if there's that yearning, if there's that question, if there's that bit of you that's putting the black over and making your life opaque or translucent or just shutting people out, I would say, give yourself a look. Because the humbling thing is, you know, when we read all this, oh, that's so nice that Jesus, God, knew us in our mother's womb. He knows you at 4 o'clock this afternoon. He knows you at 11 o'clock tonight. He knows you tomorrow and the day after and the day after and the day after. And there is no quadrants for him. He knows every corner, everything. And so when we say, ooh, if I get in the darkness, he won't find me. He is light. Folks, when he steps up and steps in, there's no darkness. There's no hiding. So, whatever you're dealing with, and I need to deal with my things, I need to realize that every corner is open. I am open to him. Even when I'm trying to hide it, I am open to him. And praise God, he's open to me. He's hiding nothing. None of his love, none of his compassion, none of his peace. It's available. So let's uh, consider that just for a few moments together. Uh, on the topic of transparency, um, I'm not going to reveal anything, but I want you guys to know that the new superintendent of schools the, the joint hire for South Harden and Hubbard Radcliffe 
is um, doing a tour of churches in the greater Eldor area, and I think that's really neat. And he has scheduled to come here next week, the 19th, and his name is Adam Zellmer, Z-E-L-L-M-E-R. So it seems like a really neat guy, so I thought I'd say hi to him when he comes, and maybe he'll know us a little bit. We often break the silence by saying, are all hearts clear? And perhaps the best we can hope for is, are we a little clearer as you and I progress through this journey of life? I'm not expecting that of you, and I hope you don't expect that of me, that all of a sudden, magic. But at least, perhaps, we're a little clearer on where we are and how we love each other. Closing prayer before the benediction is 591, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. And uh, we're just going to sing the second verse. So you, if you know it, great, but otherwise it's in your hymnal, 591. Verse 2. and knowledge that you are loved. God loves you. Show his love to others this week. Amen.